Hi everyone, so yeah, I'm, I'm Michael Markian. I work for a company called F1000. Uh, bit of context, we're probably one of the more innovative publishers out there. And so I want to talk a little bit more about getting recognition for uh, research outputs and not just the ones that you might traditionally think of. Uh, the publishing scene is probably changing a lot more um, as we're going forward and I think there's a lot more things that you do as a researcher that you should be getting credit for and there's a lot more that we're actually introducing into uh, the publishing um, industry. So I'm going to uh, talk a little through that. So first of all, this week there was actually a really uh, interesting uh, article um, about the whole history of scientific publishing and uh, how basically the um, media tycoon Robert Maxwell uh, completely took publishing out the hands of the scientists and uh, gave it to um, businesses that are holding science up. And um, I don't know how much I, I felt a bit, uh, the publishers were painted in a bad light there. I mean. I don't think it's just them who are complicit with how uh, science is being held up. I also think the research community themselves are also uh, partly to blame. I think we're all complicit. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do is say, yes, I do think the publishers, uh, including myself, we, well, we can do things better. And hopefully, uh, through my talk, we can uh, go through some, some of the things that we're going to do for that. So firstly, there's no getting away from it or getting around it. The journal is the coin of the realm in, in biomedicine. Um, so as Macaulay Culkin is, is, is looking at there, everything he does in his research or your cells, anything you do in your research, it's always, where can I publish this? And linked to where can I publish this is what impact factor does it have? And people can say that this doesn't really matter, but um, I think you, can, you, you would all probably know that your PIs look at it. Um, for career progression on a CV, one of the first things people look at is where has this person published? Uh, institutional reporting, um, the REF we spoke about this morning, uh, the new REF in 2021, if I'm right, uh, is saying that it will not look at impact factors. However, they can say that, but each institute I know has its own secret little rule that they do look at impact factors. So when they do send uh, stuff to the REF, they are actually basing it on impact factor. And then again, grant applications, anytime you go for a grant, uh, it's being looked at by a peer review panel and they have to look at lots of grant applications, maybe 200 at a time, and guess what they use to triage and go down to a, a certain amount? Yeah, it's the impact factor. So publishing is, is being kind of looked at by the, by the impact factor, and so we need to look at ways of how to measure research around this, and uh, uh, I think I'm gonna go, go a bit more into that now. So apart from where you publish, there are other things that you know, happen in the research cycle that, that you do. Uh, and here are five that I think are important that I think um, really do show what happens in the lab more and what we should be getting credit for. So data, so data creation, uh, curation, analysis, storage, that's all a really difficult job. Uh, the only data that gets published in articles is, tends to be the, the impactful things or the stuff that was positive. Uh, there's lots of data that's created that isn't published. But you know, the time and effort that goes into this, uh, realistically there should be some ways for you to get some credit for the data produced, regardless of what it is. Software and code, so more and more the kind of uh, wet lab uh, in biology, they have bioinformaticians now that create new methods and software tools to really analyze all these this, um, massive amounts of biological data that's being um, created, so again, are these software and code getting the recognition that they should be? It's just the article itself that's getting the recognition, but there's things that are created on the way that are really helping to, to, to create articles. All results, so again, as journals like to choose positive studies, what happens to all those studies uh, when they're negative? So for example, when I was a researcher, a lot of my stuff didn't do anything. Uh, I couldn't publish it because no publisher wanted to publish it. They want to publish stuff that's cool and sexy. So I still got it all on my hard drive. I look at it sometimes and think, yeah, that was good stuff. But realistically, no one else does. Uh, but realistically, we should be able to share all of this stuff. We're, we're, we're being funded for it. Uh, the institutes are paying for the equipment. So we should be able to publish this. Peer review, I think this is the biggest one that, that annoys me. Um, everyone peers, uh, reviews their peers' work for no money. Uh, publishers make a lot of money out of it. And we don't get any credit for it. Uh, and in some instances, you know, I've worked in publishing a long time, 
the peer review really actually makes the paper a lot better and they should actually be acknowledged for that. So I think um, peer review needs to have some more recognition. And then expertise as well. So normally on, on an article you kind of look at the first author or the last author and say they should be credited with the work here. And in between, there's lots of other authors that have added some expertise. So maybe someone who uses a uh, piece of equipment much better than everyone else, they should be credited with that work too. And so I think that every author, everyone should know who contributed what to a particular paper. So these are all things that I think uh, have been uh, neglected. And so this is how I kind of see how things are at the moment. I think all of these uh, things that I've just spoke about, the data, the code, we shove them all in, we package them up, and we publish an article. And it's that article, not the individual parts, that actually gets credit. Whereas I think now, in the future, and the way the, way the technology is going, I think we should be fitting the actual article around all the individual elements. And so that's the kind of stuff that we do at F1000. Um, and so I'm suggesting that we kind of, uh, a bit like from uh, Gemma this morning, I think we do need to kind of disrupt it a bit more. We don't need to make things better. We probably need to have a little bit of a breakdown and start publishing in a different way. And so publishing today, I think, you know, introduces delays. That's, again, mainly due to the impact factor uh, because selection chooses what gets published in each journal. And so that can, you know, create maybe delays up to a year. They don't really care about data, so uh, as long as the results are in the, in the paper, then that's fine. Uh, this is an issue because obviously, in order to build upon one's work, we need to be able to reproduce it. And it's very difficult if you haven't got the original source data or uh, a, a method and protocol to help you do that. And the other thing is the bias that, that is kind of in, in involved in publishing. So, you know, we, we say when an article is published, we're like, well, that's published in a certain journal, it must be good. How do we know? How do we know it's even been reviewed? Or do we know what the reviewers said about it? And again, this kind of selection means that positive stuff are being published and, and negative stuff isn't. And so I think there's a lot of research waste. And this is difficult because funders and institutions are more and more saying, we want rapid access. We want to accelerate impact. We want to drive open and collaborative research. I don't think we can really do that with how we're publishing at the moment. So at F1000, we've been working with funders and institutions, and in a sense, we're kind of bypassing the role of a publisher, and, and we're working with institutions and funders to publish their own work uh, that they fund. And so we launched Welcome Open Research uh, with Welcome about eight months ago, uh, and it's published um, nearly 80 articles. It's been very well received, and all the fundies are, are using it now to, to complement their work. Uh, as soon as we launched that, the Gates Foundation came to us uh, and asked for a similar platform. And then just this week, we uh, are working with um, UCL, who want to really accelerate the, the impact of the child health research they do at Great Ormond Street, and they also want a new way to, to make sure this uh, becomes available. Uh, and there's some other funders and some other institutions who will be uh, working. Yeah, not the EU, Graham, not yet. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, and so, um, basically, I'll just talk you through the publishing model uh, of, of, of all these platforms. And so this is a publishing model that we pioneered at F1000. Uh, and the idea is that it, it's um, based upon author control. So there's no publishers, no one's telling you what you can publish, uh, you're in control. If anything, the platform is, is like a machine that you've used to publish. So the idea is that you would send your article in, um, we give it what we call a pre-publication check, which means we check that it's not plagiarised, that it meets ethical guidelines, all stringent checks uh, like you would see at a normal journal. But what we're not doing is saying, we want that, we don't want that. We're saying if it passes these checks, we will publish that paper. And this normally takes around seven days. So it goes from coming into us, we then publish it. Uh, at this point, we also, if there's any data, we would ask for the data, and um, we would help uh, the author put it into a, a suitable repository. Um, no data, no publication, that's, that's how we work. Uh, and then once we have everything together, like I say, it takes around a week uh, at its fastest, we then publish the paper there and then. So once that paper's published, uh, the, you as the author select the reviewers. We obviously check that there's no conflicts of interest, but again, you're in control. And once it's published, uh, a post-publication peer review process happens. So we invite the reviewers for you, and uh, what happens is they're, they're published with their names, their affiliations, 
Uh, and they're asked to join in in what we call a collaborative peer review. So they're not judging if it's impactful or not. Their role is to uh, help you make that paper um, to, a, to a state that it could then be indexed in somewhere like um, Web of Science or Scopus or PubMed. And so along with the um, peer review, they have to give one of the, uh, they have to give a status. So if you can see the tick, the question mark, and the, and the red cross, Along with their review, the reviewers have to give a tick, which means this is really good work. I think some minor changes are needed. Uh, that's called an approved status. There's an approved with reservation status, which is a green question mark, which means this is really good work, but I think there's some more major things that need looking at. And then there's a red cross, which means uh, currently there's some flaws in this paper, and I think that you, they really need to be addressed before this is indexed uh, so other people can see it. And so the idea is that in order to be indexed in places like PubMed and places where people search, um, you need to have two green ticks or two green question marks and a green tick. And so as a reader, they can see all of the versions of the paper. They can see how you've interacted with the reviewers. They can talk to the reviewers at any time. And it's meant to be a, a place of scientific discussion. Uh, and it works. It's, I mean, we've been publishing like this for, for, for four years now, and, and the funders have seen that this is a, a publication model that's working. And so the other thing about this is that we're also trying to include all the things that I said were getting neglected. So with data, we make sure that all data is citable, so you can make it an individual piece of uh, work and, and cite it, and people can reference that. Uh, so we um, collaborate with people like Figshare, who we saw this morning. We're working with a group called Plotly, who are helping us make figures uh, more interactive, so I mean, now we have the internet, I don't think we need to have static images, I think we can play with them, let people change parameters, uh, so we're working on that too. Um, software and code, so we work with a, a startup called Code Ocean, and so we have, within our tools you can rerun code and change parameters again to, to, to play about with things. Uh, we also give each bits of software and code their own DOI using GitHub and Zenodo. Um, all results, so we will publish any results, positive, negative, as long as it's technically sound work, we will publish it. And we also publish different types of articles, so it doesn't necessarily need to be a research article, it could be a protocol, it could be a case study, it could be a methods paper, so the idea is that you would get credit for any kind of research you do. Peer review, every peer reviewer can add their ORCID ID to it, so that means you can uh, add it to a personal profile that people can check. Each individual review gets a DOI too, so it's an archivable too. And as a junior researcher yourself, it can be difficult to, to give a review. Uh, I'll talk about it in the end conference session a bit more later. But what we do is a, a, a kind of process where you can co-review. So you, you co-review with your uh, PI or someone else in your lab to help you learn how to do it, but also, I get, but also um, um, get some credit for that too. So why are funders doing this? So basically, uh, the funders are doing this um, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, should they be giving a service like this to, to their um, staff? The Wellcome Trust, for example, spent £7 million on open access fees last year. So realistically, should they be providing something where they can publish their research, which would be more cost effective? They're also looking at ways to kind of increase reproducibility and the sharing of all kinds of findings because again, as a funder, and you only see three articles from a five year uh, stretch of money, is that everything? Surely, surely other things have happened. So I think they want to see exactly what's happened. And so what we're trying to do is enable everyone to get research credit and recognition. And so um, I'll look forward to a few questions later, but um, basically, yeah, we're trying to, everything that you do, we want you to get credit for. So that's what we're going to try and do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much.